I'm so excited to talk about this. It's two phrases in one. Magnifies the positivity of what's being said here. This is like exponentially positive. So eloquent and so satisfying to analyze. Hi everyone, welcome to this video. On my channel, I analyze song lyrics very in depth through the lens of literary analysis. Today we're gonna be analyzing the song True Blue by Boy Genius. If you didn't know, Boy Genius is a band made up of the artists Phoebe Bridgers, Lucy Dacus, and Julian Baker, all very talented singer-songwriters in their own right. However, when they come together, I find that something very magical happens. They just fit together perfectly. Boy Genius has released three songs already. The song True Blue, which we're analyzing today, the song Emily I'm Sorry, and $20. Let me know if you have a favorite of those. I love all three. I think they're both very beautiful and very intricately made, which I really appreciate. However, I will say I've been listening to True Blue on repeat a little bit more than the other two, so it's my current favorite. Before we begin, here's a list of literary terms I may refer to throughout this video. And as always, everything I state is just my own personal opinion. Music is of course very subjective and everyone is gonna have their own unique take on it. I always love hearing what you think down below in the comments. Before we begin, I'm going to talk about my feelings in regards to this song a little bit. Some of my mild emo vibes. So if you don't care about that, feel free to skip this part. I always have timestamps below. Okay, so when I listen to True Blue by Boy Genius, I feel like it is that very calm, balanced, stable moment as the sun is setting and you're outside and there is like a light breeze and you're like enjoying the breeze and you're like, ah, oh, this is nice. That's how I feel like when I listen to the song and something I find very interesting is that this song brings up a lot of feelings for me that are reminiscent of my adolescence like I feel adjacent to my adolescence here's my adolescence and here's me and we're like parallel right now it's like very similar but different I don't know if I describe that effectively for anyone else to understand but that is very specifically how I feel I also feel like myself when I listen to the song. If you watched my analysis of Phoebe Bridger's song, Scott Street, you may remember how in the beginning of that video, I talked about how Scott Street makes me feel like myself. So I do have a similar feeling here as well. IDKY, and I think a reason that I listen to this song so much and that I listen to Scott Street so much is maybe because I'm trying to grasp onto something, but I can't because I don't know what it is I'm trying to like get a hold of. However, I will say that I don't think it's necessary to completely understand why things make you feel the way they do. Even though I literally have an analysis channel and even though my rising sign is literally a Virgo, I think sometimes you can just be chill and enjoy things and not need to analyze what they mean but this is how the song True Blue makes me feel. I feel very connected to it for some reason and not because of the plot, just because of the vibes. I would love to know if you guys, first of all, kind of understand what I'm saying or if you guys have any songs that you listen to that make you feel a very faint, familiar feeling. I would love to hear about any songs that do that for you down below. Let's move on. Let's discuss the song title. This song is called True Blue. True Blue is an actual phrase and it's defined as unwavering in one's commitment, extremely loyal. This is why I think diction is very important and this is why I stand dictionaries so hard because if I didn't have the definition of the phrase True Blue, I would be inclined to think about this song title in a more melancholy way because blue is often associated with sadness. When someone is feeling blue, they're feeling sad, they're feeling down. And then taking into account the word true, maybe I would have been like, okay, true sadness, right? Or something very melancholy like that. You can of course think about this song in whatever way you want if that resonates with you to also think about the color blue as being representative of sadness. If that makes sense for you, that's completely valid. However, for me, having listened to this song and read through the lyrics multiple times, I personally feel like the literal definition that we found in the dictionary is what applies to this song. That's what makes the most sense for me. First one. The entirety of verse one is from the point of view of the protagonist and it is about someone who's very close to them. We can interpret this as being about a romantic interest or about a very close platonic friend. I think either interpretation is valid. I would love to know what you think about that down below. Let's concentrate on the first two lines. You said you wanted to feel alive, so we went to the beach. Those two lines indicate to me that the protagonist of this song has a very close relationship with someone. I'm thinking about this as a romantic interest, so that's how I'm going to 
to be talking about it in the song, but keep in mind you can interpret it in whatever way you want. The words you and we suggest to me that there is a very close relationship between the protagonist and the love interest. The you is referring to the love interest in my opinion. They're the ones who wanted to feel alive. They're the ones who needed to do something to get out of the emotional or mental state they were in. But the protagonist here is saying that they both went to the beach, right? We went to the beach. That makes me think of a close partnership. That makes me think of two people who care about one another. Even though the love interest may be experiencing like a hard moment, the protagonist is in the trenches with them. This reminds me of Taylor Swift's lyric, I want your dreary Mondays in her song Paper Rings from her album Lover. This to me connotes a feeling of partnership and of care and togetherness, which I really appreciate. I think that's very beautiful. You were born in July 95 in a deadly heat. I love how specific these lyrics are. As we go forward in the song, there's even more specificity, which I stand. I always say in my videos that specificity brings forth relatability in song lyrics. The more specific you get, I feel like the more relatable the song gets, which may be counterintuitive because you're talking about a very, very particular thing. But I think that specific lyrics makes songs feel like a diary entry and that feels more intimate. When you feel like you are getting a glimpse into someone's personal life, if someone is sharing their diary entry with you, you feel closer to them. It establishes trust. So to me, I love specific lyrics because I feel like the songwriter or the singer is trusting me as a listener to share something personal with me. And even if it is a fictional story, it doesn't matter because this is art, right? We're forming an emotional connection to the artwork being presented to us. The rest of the lyrics in verse one remind me very vaguely of the song Slow Burn by Casey Musgraves. The opening line, born in a hurry, always late, haven't been early since 88. I love those lyrics so much. I actually analyzed the song Slow Burn by Casey Musgraves. I'll link it down below for you. But that is immediately what I thought of here when I read you were born in July 95 in a deadly heat. You say you're a winter bee, but summer's in your blood. I love lyrics like this because it's talking about the person's identity, right? Casey Musgraves did that too. She talked about her birthday in terms of her identity and there was an ironic twist to it. And this is a similar thing here. I'm not saying this was copied from Casey's song, not at all. You know, I've heard this thought process or this way of describing someone before. It's a thing that people do and I love it every time I come across it. So this love interest was born in July 95. They were born in the deadly heat, which is ironic because this love interest identifies with the winter. But summer is in your blood. You can't help but become the sun. This is very beautiful. They're showcasing how the protagonist views the love interest. The love interest themselves identifies as a winter person. However, the protagonist sees the love interest in a different way. They see them as someone who always becomes the sun. The sun symbolically is often positive. The sun brings forth light imagery. Light can represent truth, it can represent clarity, it can represent positivity and happiness. When everything is illuminated, you can see everything, right? There's nothing dark or mysterious, there's no secrets. Everything is clear and pure and wonderful. When it says you can't help but become the sun, this is the protagonist viewing the goodness, the purity, and the love interest. They view them as someone who effortlessly becomes like a beam of light, which is very beautiful. That notion that's being described here is in contrast a little bit to how the love interest feels. I don't think the love interest feels like negatively about themselves. I don't think there's dark imagery associated with the love interest, but the love interest is someone who loves winter. But to the protagonist, this love interest is clearly a summer person. They were born in the summer. The summer, the sun is in their blood, right? And they are metaphorically, figuratively a summer person as well. Some Symbolically, winter is often negative. Again, it's always context dependent, but in the winter, it's cold. It's dreary. You need to make sure you have access to heat for safety reasons. A lot of animals hibernate during the winter. So we can associate the winter time with negative vibes if we wanted to. For me, I don't really want to think about winter metaphorically here. I just want to think about the sun metaphorically, but I did want to mention that in case that resonates with you. I find this first verse to be very cute and eloquent. It's the protagonist talking about how they view the love interest. It's meant to contrast a little bit with how the love interest identifies themselves. From the tone of this verse, especially the last few lines, I feel like the protagonist has a great deal of admiration for the love interest. I think that they admire and really appreciate how the love interest always turns into the sun. It's something beautiful that they get to witness. And you know, we never see ourselves the way that the people that love us see us. We always see ourselves through a different lens. Perhaps the love is the light in the protagonist's life. Verse 2. 
Verse 2 is still the protagonist talking about the love interest. When you move to Chicago, you were spinning out. The phrase spinning out to me indicates that the love interest may have felt out of control, maybe internally in regards to their thoughts and their emotions, but maybe this spinning out also manifested more literally and more outwardly in their life choices, life decisions. Oftentimes, a lot of things can change with a move. So I'm thinking about a little bit of chaos and I read those two lines and it says, when you don't know who you are, you F around and find out. So I'm getting some mild existential crisis vibes. We don't know the whole context of the move here but again when you move things change when it says you f around and find out i think that showcases how well the protagonist knows the love interest they know that when the love interest has moments like this maybe the way the love interest finds stability again and gets out of these existential crises is by doing some chaotic things then it says when you called me from the train water freezing in your eyes you were happy and i wasn't surprised there is a lot of movement in verse two in the first line we have the word moved then we have the phrase spinning out the phrase f around which can connote like internal movement right like emotions and thoughts and then we have the train i think what i'm about to say is an over analysis but i'm gonna say it because this is literally an analysis channel trains are often used as transportation metaphors we talk about transportation metaphors a lot on my channel a lot in my lana del rey analyses but also sometimes in my taylor swift analyses and also in scott street by phoebe bridgers we talked about transportation metaphors because she had all those sounds of like the bike and the train and everything at the end of Scott Street. When I think about a transportation metaphor, I think about an internal journey versus an external journey. Here I do believe that the love interest was on a literal train, but if we want to, we can also think about the love interest going through an internal journey. Maybe the train can be representative of the relationship between the protagonist and the love interest. The train could represent an internal journey through emotions, through memories, through thoughts, etc. When it says the love interest moved to Chicago, it makes me think that the protagonist was wasn't there with the love interest. Perhaps there was some long distance going on. Later on, it says that the love interest moves in with the protagonist. So there is a journey throughout this song. And if we want, we can think about the train as being representative of the journey of the relationship being discussed in this song. And again, you can think about this in terms of platonic best friends or more romantic like I am. Your interpretation is valid. It's all chill. You do not have to interpret the song the way I am. This is just what resonates with me. Always want to make sure that I say that. The fact that the Paul is mentioned here suggests to me that that phone call was important to the protagonist for some reason or another. These may seem like random events to us, but they have a significance to the protagonist because it's from their point of view. As humans, we often mark different moments in our lives with specific events that occurred, even if they seem random and mundane. So in my opinion, this phone call on the train must have some sort of significance to the protagonist. It seems like what they talked about on the phone call was positive. It says water freezing in your eyes. That to me could be two different things. It could signify that the love interest was crying out of happiness. It was cold outside, so the tears in their eyes were cold. The water is referring to their tears. Or it could have been raining as well. Rain could bring forth more water imagery, which would be positive. When I interpret rain on this channel, I usually interpret it in terms of cleansing something and being reflective of a renewal or a rebirth. Again, all of this could very well be an overanalysis, and I don't even know if I want to interpret this metaphorically for myself like personally, but when we look at this, the train would be a positive metaphor in this context, the water would be positive, the word happy is positive, and if it's rain, it would also be positive. Like if the water was referring to rain, it would signify a renewal, a rebirth, and a cleansing of sorts, and the train represents movement. So all of those could indicate that the relationship is moving forward in a way. Maybe there's more emotional depth being cultivated between the two after this phone call. Maybe there was some sort of breakthrough they had. Again, this could all be an overanalysis for some, but I do like to explore different avenues of thought in hopes that one of them may resonate with you more. So feel free to tell me what you think about that lyric down below. For me personally, I think the more literal interpretation resonates with me a little bit more. That may change later. Who knows? But for me, I think that this is just a memory the protagonist had. And I think the water freezing in your eyes lyric is referring to the love interest crying tears of happiness when it's cold outside. For some reason, that is what makes sense to me. When it says you were happy and I wasn't surprised, I think that's significant because in verse one, the last line said, you can't help but become the sun. To me, this is what I think is happening. The love interest is calling the protagonist. They're crying tears of joy when it's very cold outside. Maybe it's winter, the love interest's favorite season. They're calling the protagonist to express that they're finally happy and they finally feel settled in Chicago. For the protagonist who knows that this 
love interest will always become the sun, they weren't surprised that the love interest was able to get to this more stable place of happiness. They knew that this was going to happen because they know the protagonist really well. That's how I'm personally interpreting it. Chorus number one. I interrupt this video with a very special message from myself. This is sponsored by me. I want to let you guys know that I'm offering services on the website Fiverr. I'm offering a few different things. I can help you refine your own analysis skills to develop your own unique perspective about poetry, about song lyrics, about any written work. I've also been getting a lot of messages from you guys letting me know that you use my videos to help you learn English. So if you need an English conversation partner, I'm your girl. You can converse through the internet. I can help you with pronunciation, sentence structure, and random things about American culture that are not super intuitive. If you're a songwriter or a poet and want me to read your original piece of work and provide you with a very detail-oriented feedback, I can do that as well. All that information is going to be linked down below. If you have any questions about any of the services I'm offering, please message me directly through the website Fiverr. Back to the video that you actually clicked here for. In the first two verses, we had the protagonist talk about the love interest from their perspective. In the chorus, however, we have self-reflection on part of the protagonist, which I really enjoy as well. It says, and it feels good to be known so well. I can't hide from you like I hide from myself. The first two verses really showcased how well the protagonist knows the love interest. They know that they will always become the sun. They knew that they would always be happy. Right? However, here the protagonist is expressing that they feel like the love interest knows them very well too. In fact, it seems like the love interest knows the protagonist better than the protagonist may know themselves. I say that because of where it says I can't hide from you like I hide from myself. It seems like both of these people know the intricacies of each other's internal worlds. And you can't have that with everyone. I think that's pretty rare. You may have some people who understand you like 50% or 60% or 10%, but to have someone that understands you to any degree higher than like 70%, I think is pretty rare. I definitely think that the connection in this song between these two people is higher than 70 percent verse three we have progression of the relationship i think that the protagonist and the love interest are literally moving in together that's how i'm interpreting it there does seem to be a little bit of tension on the move-in day it says breaking a sweat on your upper lip they're sweat because they're moving right physical activity however it could also be hot outside if we think about seasons all throughout this song it's interesting because we start with discussion about summer and winter in verse one we have potential cold weather in verse two because it says water freezing so i'm thinking more about winter and then here we talk about sweat but we also talk about humidity which we can associate with the summer if we track the seasons through this song it's very interesting when we had the summer and heat talked about in verse one it was in a more positive context here if we want to think about humidity as being suggestive of summer it's a little bit more negative this seems to be like a tense moment because the next line says you already heard my feelings three times and only the way you could. So verse three is recounting an experience and it's a little bit different from the first two verses because verse three is talking about something that's not super positive, which I like. I think this brings balance to this song in regards to this relationship. This relationship, in my opinion, does progress throughout this song. So I like that there's awareness on part of the protagonist that there are tense times and not so tense times. This shows me that this relationship is real. And again, the specificity here, for example, the leaky fall, it, it makes me visualize what's happening. It helps set the context and set the scene. And the specificity of the phrase three times, it's kind of heartbreaking a little bit. It does make me sad, but the fact that it's so specific shows me that the protagonist probably remembers even to this day the specific three things that they were hurt about. The specificity here showcases the intensity of the emotions the protagonist felt. When it says, in only the way you could, that's like a con to someone knowing you really well, right? It's very beautiful and wonderful when someone really, really knows you, but that also means they know how to push your button, either intentionally or unintentionally. Here, I think it seems like it was more intentional. You already hurt my feelings three times in the way only you could. Also, when someone really understands you to a great depth, 
you have higher expectations of them because you know they understand you and you know that they know what your triggers are or what things might hurt you. They are familiar with the intricacies of your emotional state. They know about your background and what things you may interpret as disrespectful, for example. Sometimes you may think that they should have known better. That's what I think about when I read that lyric. While verse 3 does talk about a not so positive moment, I don't view this as negative overall because I view this whole song as chronicling the progression of a relationship and I think it's healthy for there to be pros and cons discussed about a relationship. I think that shows awareness and it shows balance. Now the moment here in verse 3, I don't get the sense that it was the most intense outrageous thing ever. I think that if even one outrageous intense thing happens, then yeah, like maybe the relationship should not go further but given the context of this song i think that this was maybe just a hard few days i don't think there were red flags going on in verse three that's my interpretation we have repetition of lyrics from the first chorus the lyrics that are repeated say but it feels good to be known so well i can't hide from you like i hide from myself then we have new lyrics i remember who i am when i'm with you if this was stated in the context of a different song i may talk about being too dependent on another person however in this song i don't get that sense. I get the sense that this relationship is relatively balanced and relatively healthy. No codependency vibes here as far as I can tell. I would love to know your opinion about that. Here I think it's beautiful that the protagonist feels like themselves when they're with this person. Your love is tough. Your love is tried and true blue. Okay, I'm so excited to talk about this. First, when I hear the word tough, I think about having grit. I think about survival. This love has what it takes to survive and it wants to survive. This is my favorite lyric because it's two phrases in one. Your love is tried and true blue. So tried and true by itself is its own phrase. When you look it up, it's defined as something that has proven in the past to be effective or reliable. Just the phrase tried and true here has a very positive connotation in regards to this love. But then we have the phrase true blue, which we already defined. It's the song title. Again, it's defined as unwavering in one's commitment. For example, someone being extremely loyal. However, here though, the phrase tried and true and true blue are put into one. It's like a hybrid phrase and that to me makes it even more positive i love this so much this kind of magnifies the positivity of what's being said here this is like exponentially positive not even double this is so eloquent and so satisfying to analyze bridge the bridge here indicates to me that there were trials and tribulations within this relationship. You've never done me wrong except for that one time that we don't talk about because it doesn't matter anymore. It seems like there was a moment when things were tense and maybe in that moment the relationship was kind of in jeopardy. There was that one time that the love interest did something to maybe betray or disrespect the protagonist but it seems like they were able to work through it because the protagonist says it doesn't matter anymore and also because where it says who on the fire I don't know what we're not keeping score that to me is pretty healthy right if you're truly forgiving someone then you're forgiving them. True forgiveness, in my opinion, is when you're not keeping count or keeping score or having something to dangle over the other person. I do think there are instances where true forgiveness can be granted. I think sometimes you can exercise acceptance but not forgiveness. To forgive someone is very noble, but I think true, pure forgiveness is being described here, and I think that is rare. I'm saying this because, to me, this has a lot of value. To me, this is showcasing a true, pure sort of forgiveness. So it has a lot of depth and I love that it says we're not keeping score. It doesn't say I'm not keeping score. They're both on the same page about it, which is very, very important. Then we have the chorus repeated. In conclusion, this song to me is chronicling a relationship and I feel like the protagonist is talking or singing about this relationship from a very stable place right now where they feel very content and fulfilled with the relationship. They can say with certainty that the love between them is true blue. It's loyal, it's strong, it has grit, it has value. We have seen that there were ups and downs in this relationship. It seems like maybe there was some long distance. They later moved in together. There was that one thing that happened 
happen that they don't talk about. So there were trials and tribulations. So we've had ups and downs in this relationship. There's so much beauty and again, value in the protagonist feeling like themselves with this person and both people understanding one another to a great extent. These are things that maybe sometimes you think you have, but later realize that the person you thought knew you really didn't know you. But here I think the love and the understanding being described are true and pure. I find this song to be quite eloquent. I love the hybrid double positive phrase of tried and true blue. I think that's so clever. Again, I find that very satisfying as someone who's analyzing the lyrics. I definitely stand the song hard if you can't tell. I would love to know what you think about this song down below in the comments. Feel free to share it with me. If you want me to analyze any other song by Boy Genius, by Phoebe Bridgers, Lucy Dacus, Julian Baker, or any other artist, feel free to comment it down below. My tutoring and consulting services are linked down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Bye!